Hello, uh, welcome to my independent project on how to create an underwater scene in 3ds Max. Uh, there are an unlimited ways to do this. Uh, the way I'm showing you is not the best way. Uh, it's just one of the simpler step-by-step uh, -step procedures that I have found that um, even if you don't have a lot of artistic ability, if you follow the steps, you'll be surprised at how uh, fantastic this work will look when it's done. Uh, there are other tutorials out online that you will find that will show you more, uh, I guess you could say more realistic ways of doing it, uh, but they do involve a lot more uh, artistic ability to fine tune some of the settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a very brief uh, animated sequence that looks something similar to this here. Um, though this one is a little fast and I probably could go back and slow it down uh, you'll notice that we have uh, water above us that's uh, moving uh, you got bubbles floating around and you have uh, light shining through the water there along with some ground fog there and uh, pretty much what we're going to be doing is using a combination of the uh, mental ray uh, architectural design materials for both water and glass as well as the mental ray rendering engine, volume fog, volume light, okay, and a particle system uh, or a P cloud as we call it. And that's virtually what you're looking at right now along with some key framing. So we're going to begin the project by taking the steps of building this uh, underwater scene and then your job at the conclusion will be to add some detail here and uh, for instance you'll you'll learn how to control the distance of fog and um, unfortunately I have a little pirate ship back here that's back in the distance and you barely can see it so one of the things I would do in my correction is to move that ship forward a little bit so that it was visible and then you'd see more of the plants and whatnot. The, uh, the procedure for completing this is very quick for the most part. The procedure for rendering is very extensive. This clip here, which is only about three seconds, took uh, my computer uh, over 24 hours to render. So you don't want a very long sequence, and you want to definitely leave enough time for rendering, um, not to wait till the last day to put this thing together. All right, so let's begin by opening up Max, and um, we'll get started with our lesson. Okay, so we're going to begin our lesson here um, by creating an underwater scene uh, by changing the render engine. We're going to come up here to rendering and uh, render setup. Under common at the very bottom, we're going to see where we can assign the renderer. Go ahead and open that up, and uh, if you've just launched Max, you're probably at default scan line. Clicking the three dots will allow you to go in and choose Mental Ray. It's very important that we use Mental Ray because we're going to be using Mental Ray lighting um, in our scene, um, and that's how this is going to work. Go ahead and close the render box when you're done. Next, we're going to create a plane in the top view. So I'm going to go to come down to Create Geometry standard primitives and I have a plane in the top view I'm just going to drag a box like this or I should say a plane uh, but over in its properties I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to go with a thousand one way we're going to go with 500 the other now I suggest you use these numbers uh, simply because the numbers we're going to use in the displacement modifier uh, will be different if you use anything uh, other than what I did. Now as far as the length and width segments, we want to put 200 in uh, because what we're going to do when we displace this, this is going to get real bumpy and we want the bumps to be nice and smooth um, so we need a very dense mesh. But it is a plane so it's not, um, it's only one f series of faces and not a box. All right, next we're going to add the displacement uh, or displace modifier to that plane. I'm going to do that with the plane selected. Come up to modify and down the list, you're going to come down, you'll see in alphabetic order, you see the word displace. Go ahead and select that. Now, like some of the modifiers, right off the bat, nothing happens. Um, we need to adjust this number. Uh, under displacement, here under the parameters, change the strength to 17. Go ahead and leave the decay set, and where it says image map down here, under image you see the word map, 
we're going to go out, we're going to hit the word none. Remember when you hit any time, any kind of button underneath map, it opens up the material map browser. And we're going to use uh, the map called noise, and we've seen this before, but uh, noise is sort of a, con uh, a series of white and black cloudiness. Once I double click on that, what it does is it's pretty much added noise to the displacement. It's taking that map and displacing the object, the actual mesh, to look like the map. Okay, we didn't apply the map to this, we applied the map as a modifier, so um, something new that you haven't seen yet before. Now what we want to do immediately is open up the material editor. And uh, a new technique you're going to learn here, uh, when you create any kind of map in a rollout, there's not a lot of editing capability. So what we're going to do to, um, to do that is we're going to take the map one noise, we're going to click and drag that to a material slot. When we do that, we want to select instance. And if you remember what an instance does is it means that this map and this map, when one is changed, they'll both change. This is how we edit a map in a rollout, is by dropping it in the material editor as an instance and making changes to it here in the material editor. So we always want to go with an instance if we're doing it this way. Hit OK. Now what you see is this, it doesn't look anything like the final rendering, it's just a reference point, you don't have to drag it, in fact don't drag it, because then you're going to apply that to there, it's not going to work. All right. Um, let's go ahead and move on to one more step and then we'll do a save. We're going to apply the following parameters to the noise map. So now that you have the map in the material editor, you can come down here into its parameters and you'll see under noise parameters we have several options. Regular, fractal, turbulence. So as we increase the turbulence, the, the water surface becomes bumpier. We want that. We want a lot of bump because um, we want this to look like a very large surface of water. Next we want to change the levels to 10. They're set at 3, go to 10. That puts a little bit more detail on it. And finally the size, we want to crank this up real high, go to 300. So now our water is not quite as turbulent, um, but it has a lot of def definition to it. We can always come back and make changes here once we go to do the rendering. If we look and see that we want our water more detailed, we can come back in and change that to 200 and get a little bit more out of it. For now we'll set with 300. Let's go ahead and save. Why don't you go ahead and name it, um, you know, uh, underwater project or underwater independent lesson. Save that file because you'll be submitting that to me um, via um, uh, external hard drive, but then um, you also want to save the rendering when we're done too. So I'm going to go to save as, I'm going to navigate out to my desktop and just save it right there as uh, underwater scene. Okay, our next step is going to be to um, select a new material slot right next to it. Now we're going to create the material for the water surface. Up to this point we've been simply putting the texture on the actual water object, but we want to create a material for the surface. Check the slot, hit get material. That's going to open up our material map browser and we're going to double click on the architectural design. Now again, if you didn't switch to mental ray, you will not have this architectural design option available. So you have to be in mental ray in order to get this. Double click arc and design. And what we're going to do, uh, we're going to look down the, um, the template here and we're going to look for water reflective surface. There we go. Go ahead and select that. That's going to make that a reflective surface which is going to be water, and under transparency we want to set that to 1.0. Right now, uh, if you look down the line here, we have refraction transparency, so let's go ahead and do that, 1.0. Now you'll see that the material slot is updated. Let's go to the advanced render options, and uh, we're going to change the advanced transparency options, alright, so that's going to be in the material editor settings. If you scroll down here a little bit, advanced rendering options, open that up. 
And we're going to change advanced transparency options. So we look down at advanced transparency options. We're going to change it to glass translucency thin wall. Okay. Use as single faces. We want to make sure that's selected. If not, this is not going to work. Now we're going to scroll down a little bit further and you're going to see special purpose maps. We're going to click the ocean shader. We're going to click that and that's going to open up the parameters for ocean. There we go. And now we want to change the word largest to 100. Smallest to 1 will stay. Quantity of 20. And a steepness of 5. Now pretty much this is just altering the surface of the water. As you can see it's updating there. Now we can go ahead, click it over, drop it on the surface. Let's save our work. Now here in a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and minimize um, the material editor, but we'll come back. In a little bit we're going to be adjusting this and, and, and checking the view, but if you hit render right now, you can't see anything. Now one of the reasons why is because the background is black. The environment is black. The water is highly reflective, so it's reflecting the black so you barely see anything. We're going to fix that. Now we're going to create the underwater environments. Okay, what's going to be underneath the water, underneath the surface of the water? Our next step is to create the, env uh, the environment that's underwater. Um, so I've moved the, uh, my view, my perspective view, underneath the surface at this point, um, which that's what we want to do is we're underwater, so we're going to be looking up at the uh, light. In a little bit, we're going to put a camera in, and, and we'll, we'll assume the position of that camera, but our next step is just to um, go up to Rendering, Environment. We could choose any blue background, but that's not going to do much for us at this point. What we want to do is we want to create a, uh, a gradient map, or what we call a, a gradient uh, ramp, which is going to change the color in uh, with depth. So it's a little bit more of an illusion. So um, where it says map, I'm going to say yes. I want to use the map, and then I'm going to choose none. When I hit none, that opens up my map browser. I'm going to use something called gradient ramp. You see that here, it's a black to, to white, I'm going to double click that. Now I can't edit that gradient ramp here. If I click on it, it just reopens up the map browser. But what I can do is I can open up this material uh, map browser here and I can drag this over to an empty slot. Select instance. Now I can have the properties to change the gradient ramp. So again, we're, we're using that, uh, we're just simply making an instance. So anything we change here is going to change this one. I'm going to go ahead and close that a while. Next we're going to tweak some uh, parameters for the gradient ramp map. Uh, right underneath the word coordinates where you see that um, pull out that says screen, change that to spherical environment. Then under the gradient ramp parameters rollout, which is farther down here, we're going to work with these flags. These are called flags. Flag 1 is selected now, it's green. So if I double click, that opens up a color swatch that I can choose from. Now just so we all have pretty close to the same color, um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to set my RGB color. My red is going to be set at 0, my green is set at 16, and my blue is going to be set at 67. Now you feel free to tweak these colors as you need to, but these are uh, these are pretty much the colors that work. Um, and we're at position zero, which means to the far left of the gradient ramp. Now we're gonna click on double click on flag two. That's the one to the far right. And we're gonna change its color. Its red is gonna become 189. The middle one's 225, yeah, 225. And then 240. And then what we're going to do is delete the middle flag. So we just click on that, hit delete. Okay, so we've got a dark blue to a light blue color. We're also going to look at the noise amount down here, which says noise. We're going to give it an amount of one. The type is going to be fractal. Size will be 
2 and levels will be 10. You can see as I'm adjusting that, look what's happening to the material. It's starting to get like a foggy, uh, cloudy look to it. And that's what we're going for in water. Water is not perfectly clear. It's very cloudy. There's a lot of turbulence in there. And that's what we're shooting for. Farther down here where it says output, we're going to open up the output rollout. And we're going to change our output amount to 3. Now notice what happened there. It got very bright white. We may want to come back in and change that. We may want to tone that down a bit. In fact, I'll give it a 2. Let's try 2. Again, we will be able to come back in and make these changes at a later time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a target camera below the surface so that we're looking up at the actual water. I'm going to take a target camera over my front view, click down here below the surface, and shoot upwards. Now, don't fret if your camera doesn't have these environmental ranges set. We're gonna we're gonna do that here in a minute. Mine by default are uh, set. I put the target on the surface of the water, and I'm going to change my perspective view to see what the camera sees. Pretty close. And do a little bit more like this. I don't want to see all water because then it's going to look like I'm straight. I want to see it, uh, you know, almost come up here a little bit so that I can get a better idea of what's floating below the water or the surface so we can put rocks and stuff in. We'll do that at the very end. Okay, next thing we want to do, um, we're going to mess with these environmental ranges here in a bit, but we're going to go ahead and create a uh, mental ray area spotlight above. Remember, we're working in mental ray, so we're, we definitely want to work with mental ray lights. So I'm going to go to create lights, and we have the MR area spot. Now, you're not seeing that um, because we're on photometric. You have to go into a standard light. Under the standard lights, now we have an MR area spot. Come up above and shoot the water, uh, shoot the light down inside the water. Don't let the light expand beyond the water. Bring the target slightly below the water, but the light must be above. We want that light coming down, shining uh, down on us as if the sun was coming through the water. Now let's look at the properties here of that. Let's hit modify with the light. Remember, just the light selected, not the target, just the light itself. Under the general parameters, we want to turn the shadows off. We leave the shadows on, the water is going to block the light. We're not going to see it. Under intensity, color attenuation, we want to turn that up to 2. Multiplier of 2. Now we can come back and adjust the color later, but we probably won't need to do that because the fog in the environment is already set to be a bluish uh, tinge. Let's go ahead and save our work. The third part of our video here is to create some underwater fog. And what the fog is going to do is gives us the illusion that the water is kind of turbulent. Um, it's not perfectly clear. Um, and even though you, we all like clear water, the fact is is that uh, clear water, super clear water, won't look like water at all. Let's go into uh, our rendering settings. Go into rendering environment. Underneath atmosphere, we're going to add fog. Not volume fog, just fog. Hit OK. Now as a review, with fog selected, these are the fog parameters that we have to work with here. First thing we want to do is select Use Map. And as you can see, there's a trend going on here right now under Environmental Color Map. We're going to take the word None and go back into Gradient Ramp again. Now, how do we alter that Gradient Ramp? How do we make changes? You probably guessed it. We're going to take that and drag it over to a material slot. Yes, we want an instance. Next, we're going to go to mapping. Okay, uh, which you know we're back into the properties here, and uh, by default, mine's saying spherical environment again. This time, I want to change it back to screen. Now this part's pretty slick here. If you notice the gradient ramp's going from left to right, we're going to change the angle. Okay, in the W direction of angle, we're going to turn that to 90. Voila. Now we have 
uh, you can see a trend here. The lighter colors, the sun, like the light up here, and then as the as the uh, the environment gets deeper towards the sea, it gets darker. So, uh, what are we missing here? Well, we're missing colors. If you can remember, we're back into the flags again. Double click that first flag. We're going to use an R of zero, a G of eleven, and a blue of forty-five. We're going to click on the left, or I'm sorry, the right flag, flag two, we're going to call it. That color is going to be red, 70, green, 144, and we'll leave blue, 255. We're going to remove that middle flag there. Okay, so that's giving us a little bit uh, better idea of our, our environment here. While we're here, let's adjust the uh, the output amount. Open up our output, and we'll change that to 1.5. Our next step is going to be to adjust those environmental ranges I had mentioned earlier on our camera. When you select your camera, uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step backwards here real quick, just so that you uh, you'll probably see your 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 light look something like this. Uh, you have the, the line in between your target and your camera, and you have this light blue area that represents the visual area coming out of the camera. As we know um, from Animation 1 that that can be adjusted through the different stock lenses, which we can play around with later. But when you come down to the environmental ranges, go ahead and hit Show. What that does is it's giving you a representation of an area, and uh, pretty much these lines are saying that anything before this and anything after this are going to be kind of... Um, kind of invisible to the rendering. Um, so if you put an object out here, you really wouldn't uh, see it as clear as you would if it was out here inside the environmental ranges. It's sort of a restricted, it's a limitation. And uh, it'll make a little bit more sense here uh, shortly, but um, go ahead and turn on environmental ranges and uh, set your near to 200, your far to 810. Now, that's going to be a little different than mine because everybody's camera is in a different spot. What we want to do is we want to make sure that one, the far um, starts before the very end of this. Now see if we go like this and bring it out, when we render we're still going to see this gap um, beyond this point. So we want to move that so it's in there. We also want to make sure the near um, being affected by the view that the view doesn't see before the plane, okay? And uh, again, you're going to kind of, you know, you'll, you'll see how this works in a little bit. Uh, so your ranges may have to change a little bit. So adjust that, adjust your camera, so that the end of the camera starts, um, or cuts off before the end of the plane. So actually, I could probably go like this a little bit. But your visual uh, representation also doesn't see any blank spots of water. Next we're going to go ahead and uh, save our work. Go ahead and do a test render if you'd uh, like and uh, at this point we can start to see how your computer is going to handle um, this long rendering. It's very detailed as I had mentioned earlier. Uh, we'll do just a render there and um, I'd recommend maybe just doing a render of 64480 until you're ready to go, uh, and then uh, when you're set, then we'll jump back and uh, maybe turn up the resolution a little bit. See here how we're starting to look like the water infinitely goes, that the, that the fog is actually keeping us from seeing, but notice up here, I can see um, my camera, there's that little gap there that I can see the blue behind. So what I need to do is I need to bring that camera in just a little bit like that. Okay. And if I want to come up like this, there we go. I can come up like this so I can see the surface. I'll do another render. All right, that looks much better here at the top that I don't see the cutoff there. Make sure that those things, especially when you're animating, uh, are very, very important. Now, Notice here, and I did this to prove a point, you can see the edge of the water now. You can see where the water stops. 
and that's because my far range extends beyond the plane. So what I need to do is I need to lower my far range. How about there? Now we'll do one last render and you will see how that improves. Not too bad. See, it's there's no abrupt cutoff. It just visually makes you begin to think that, that that's infinite. And this is uh, one of the tricks we need to learn in 3D is that we, we cannot spend too much time building elaborate large scenes. We need to make people believe they're in this large scene, but we don't have the time to do it. And we have to use environmental ranges to create that illusion that we can only see far. On a nice clear day, visibility is no more than 10. So just keep that in mind, and uh, hopefully you'll get that from this lesson. All right, let's. Um, well, we just saved, but um, let's make another save that way because we made some changes. If your environmental ranges weren't set, make sure those are done, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to our next section here.